As we documented last night, the student walkout for gun control yesterday looked at times more like a political celebration than a somber protest, with left-wing politicians greeted like rock stars. Look at how the crowd gathered at the U.S. Capitol with their selfie sticks in hand, greeted Bernie Sanders as he made his way to the bullhorn. Oh, my God, they were going nuts. It was pure partisan politics. It was scripted and screamed. And why am I saying that? Because... Because it is not simply about gun control anymore. Oh, here. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay. Because it's not simply about gun control. This is about human life. This is about the children who have lost their lives to gun violence. So I ask our Republican lawmakers, is their right to have a gun more important than our right to live? Uh, not partisan at all. Look, that's a nice applause line. But of course, the wrath of the students is misdirected. The lines they're shouting, many used repeatedly over the years by anti-gun activists, conveniently do not address the real problem with that horrific tragedy at Stoneman Douglas High. The NRA is not responsible for allowing Nicholas Cruz to be armed and dangerous. Neither are Republican politicians, that young lady just called out, who support Second Amendment rights for law-abiding Americans. A new surveillance video just released by court order confirms what we already knew. Due to malfeasance, cowardice, or just pure poor judgment, the first officer on the scene, Broward Deputy Scott Peterson, did not enter Building 1200, where Cruz was carrying out his slaughter. He arrives on a golf cart, you see him there, with staff members while the massacre was underway. And the video shows Peterson with his gun drawn, but then he steps back and he remains outside. And he stood there as Nicholas Cruz's six-minute spree of shooting continued. Well, in a statement, Peterson's lawyer claimed the deputy thought the shots were being fired outside. But these radio communications released last week demonstrate that he knew the shots were coming from inside Building 1200. Wow. As we'll discuss in a moment, Peterson and none of the other three officers that were on the scene followed police protocol. Remember what Broward Sheriff Scott Israel, that number, said when he was pressed about Peterson's response? I gave him a gun. I gave him a badge. I gave him the training. If he didn't have the heart to go in, that's not my responsibility. No. <laughs> so much for the buck stopping at the top. Now, Israel, I know it sounds, it sounds tough here, but he comes off as a slimy self-promoter. And the stories over the years about how he's hired his friends and his family in key positions, reportedly many of them not qualified, after he was elected. And this is the same guy, by the way, Sheriff Israel, who thought it was appropriate to opine on a CNN town hall just a week after the shooting. They were supposed to be doing the investigation. He's on TV. And, of course, when he was on TV, he did not even mention the failure of Scott Peterson on scene. Look, many of those advocating for gun control post-Parkland, they want to look away from the errors committed by law enforcement, which were numerous and, frankly, obscene at both the federal and the state level. There's almost no discussion at yesterday's rallies mentioning the fact that Nicholas Cruz's dangerous and disturbing behavior was flagged repeatedly to authorities over a period of two years, starting in February of 2016. Now, just a few reminders, because we forget this stuff after just a month. On February 5th, 2016, Broward police is told by an anonymous caller that Nicholas Cruz had threatened to shoot up his school and posted a photo of himself with guns on Instagram. The info was provided to Deputy Scott Peterson. 
Then on September 28, 2016, an investigator for the Florida Department of Children and Families concludes after a visit that Cruz is stable despite finding fresh cuts on his arms, apparently self-inflicted. His mother, Linda Cruz, said he had recently spoken of buying weapons. Then, on September 24, 2017, a YouTube user named Nicholas Cruz posts a comment stating he wants to become, quote, a professional school shooter. The FBI in Mississippi hears of this, but fails to make the connection to Florida. Then there was this. A few weeks after his mother died, on November 29, 2017, the Palm Beach County family that took Cruz in after his mother's death called the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office to report a fight between Cruz and their son. He bought a gun about a week and a half ago, and he gets it today, so that we think that he's going there now. Because that's all he wants is his gun, and that's all he cares about is his gun. And he bought tons of I mean, it, uh, bullets and stuff, and I took it away from him. And I have a flash of all the little guns here. And BB guns, so. though. But he, ha he has a real gun that he's going to get now. Then she mentioned specific threats he had made. He put the gun in the head of his brother before, so it's not the first time. And he did that to his mom. His mom died November 3rd. But he's not. It's not the first time he put a gun in somebody's head. It's unbelievable to hear this. And then there were two other calls, one to Broward the next day and one to the FBI on January 5th of this year, tagging Cruz again as a potential school shooter. Neither Broward nor the FBI followed up. So, while everybody's denouncing the NRA or trashing President Trump in the wake of the sickening school shooting, activists might think that, although it's fun to get the coverage on the evening news or, you know, be the subject of an exciting viral video for your speech in front of the Capitol, you're only hurting your own cause if you refuse to acknowledge, really focus on the fact that we actually didn't need new laws to stop Cruz. We needed to follow the proper policing on the state and federal levels, because had those, that, that policy, those protocols actually been conducted, Cruz would have been prevented from carrying out the Parkland carnage. He probably wouldn't have been able to get a gun in the first place. Sheriff Scott Israel, after all of this, Look, he should have packed his desk as soon as he learned of Deputy Peterson's failure on his watch. The shooter was not confronted in the building. Instead of passing the buck and grandstanding against the NRA, that's what a good sheriff would have done. And that's the angle.